You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here talking with Cole Bradley. His new EP, Back on a Beach, is out now. Cole, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and welcome to The Pit. Derek, thank you so, so much for having me. It's uh, it's an honor talking, man. I uh, obviously love British Columbia, and uh, yeah, man, any any anyone from BC is a friend of mine. That's all I got to say. Yes, yes. Uh, my first question is pretty obvious. Just do you love Alberta beef? I do love Alberta beef, man. How can you not? Growing up in Calgary, <laughs> Calgary uh, spending, you know, 18 years growing up right in the heart of Alberta, it's a, it's a staple. And if you've never had it, you're missing out. It's definitely one of our one of our gems there in, in the old Alberta. So shout out to all those uh, farmers out in the prairies. Shout out to that. They're, they're, they're the real heroes uh, work, working hard and, and providing us with that, that good old Alberta beef. Yes. Gotta love it. Absolutely. So I uh, usually do a lot of interviews with an entire band. So whenever I get this chance to do a one-on-one -on -one interview, I like to get a little more biographical. I want to know like your your story, who you are. Your so take me back to your origins. Who was a young Cole? You were growing up in Calgary or around Calgary? Yeah. No. I uh, I grew up I grew up right right in the heart of Calgary, and um, it was awesome. And and obviously I'm a country music singer and. The Calgary Stampede is a staple for country music, and it's all kinds of rodeos and and that kind of thing there. So, yeah, I pretty much started singing when I was uh, when I was five years old, and I was in a bunch of choirs and stuff. And eventually, as kind of the time went on, we we, we were in the Young Canadians at the Calgary Stampede, and my my love for performing kept growing and growing and growing. And then, you know, a few years later, kind of when I my early teens, I was recording EPs in Calgary and at recording local recording studios there with local producers, and then. From there, it just leads to, you know, recording sessions in L.A. And a, and a move down to Nashville and so on and so forth. So, yeah, from the from the very beginning, it was always music. It was it was music and hockey there for a little while, but I was always <laughs> a better uh, guitar player than I was a hockey player. That's all I got to say. So, uh, is there other people in your family that are musical? Uh, my uh, my mom's my my mom's dad, so my granddad and my dad's mom are both musical. So my grandma and my granddad, both on different sides. Uh, both, one's a great piano player, one was a great singer. And um, my parents are terrible at singing. So I would have to say that we always say that uh, it skipped a generation in terms of musicality. <laughs> my sister can sing. She's a pretty good singer herself. But uh, yeah, I think it skipped a generation for sure. At, at what age did you pick up the guitar? I was 10 years old when I picked up the guitar for the first time. And it's pretty fun. We did guitar lessons and all that kind of fun things. And you know, started off with the basic power chords, nothing too fancy and nothing too pretty sounding, that's for sure. But with a little bit of time, I feel like uh, we're, we're kind of hitting our stride and we're still, and I feel like I'm still <laughs> getting better at it and still picking away. But yeah, so it's almost been, yeah, 15 years since I've been playing guitar, which is crazy to think about. And was the guitar your first instrument? Guitar is the first instrument and it's my only instrument too. I mean, I can play, you know, the odd one or two songs on the piano, but uh, I've always been the <laughs> guitar kind of guy, you know, three chords and the truth, that is country music, so... Got to yeah. pride myself on that. Yeah, yeah. And you've been recording since you were 14, right? That's what I saw in your bio there. That, that is correct, yeah. So uh, what? try to go back in your mind to when you were 14 and you were first making songs. Who do you think was your biggest inspiration? Well, that's a great question. I think, obviously, I loved country music, but um, kind of when, when you're young, you're just kind of trying to figure out your sound, right? And you don't really know what country music was, you know, back then. And eventually as you get old you kind of get a realm of, of who you think you are as an artist and what your sound should be like so I've kind of did a couple of years in the pop world there as I felt like I had kind of this voice that was uh that was more made for you know pop radio but um from there yeah then eventually kind of progressed to country music but I still, still think the heart of songwriting was always there like I always loved the way that Darius Rucker wrote songs and Kenny Chesney wrote songs and even though uh, our songs still had kind of a more pop production I still felt like the roots of it was kind of country music songwriting and, and coming forward to now, who do you think are some of your newer influences, like people that you've kind of just recently got really attached to? Well, that's that's, that's a great that's a great question. Um, yeah, obviously for me, it's it's a, I I always go back to my old roots. Like I always think about Kenny Chesney and Garth Brooks and Tim McGraw. Whenever I'm recording a record, I always think of those guys because that's kind of how I found my love for country music, and I still listen to their songs today. And like those hits back then and the stuff they're putting out. I think they still keep up with the time and the and the current things. But there's a lot of good people in country radio right now. I think Cameron Marlowe is a great artist coming out of Nashville that everyone should check out. There's another artist called Dipper who right now, who I just think has a very cool, I mean, it's a great artist name, first of all, Dipper. <laughs> but um, he's got a good, cool sound too. So, uh, no, I love it, man. I think that, that music is, uh, it's obviously, 
it's it's at a cool place. There's so many different artists out there doing their own thing, and obviously platforms like TikTok and social media just make it so much easier to to put out music than ever before. So I think music overall is, is heading in a good direction. But yeah, if I was gonna pick two guys off the top of my head that that I'm kind of really digging in Nashville that that I that I kind of inspired by would be Cameron Marlowe and this guy named Dipper. So all right. And and a lot of country music is about storytelling. And when I listen to a lot of your songs, I feel like even if you're not necessarily telling a narrative story, you're still trying to capture like the feeling of a time and a place. Mm -hmm. And so no, is, totally. is that totally like your kind of thing? Yeah, I think I think for me, I think that that's totally it. You, want, you, want, you always want to make people feel something. I think that's no matter what genre you do, but especially in country music, you want to make people feel something. And that's important to me. And, you know, if you can, if you can, you know, show that imagery, like we have a song that, we just released called Back on a Beach, as you're kind of mentioning before, but we really kind of set up the imagery and people can really feel like they're in that spot. So I think obviously I want people to, you know, have all the have all the senses and you know, smell it, taste it, feel it, touch it, all that kind of stuff, like in a song if they can. But I think for me, the most important thing about song is 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 universal truths. And like, you know, sometimes what I find is there's so many things that go on in your life. And if you can be honest with the stories that you're telling, so many, so many people can relate to that. And I just love any country song that has a, has a universal truth to it and something that everyone can, can relate to, even if it comes directly from your own heart, you know? And oftentimes it seems like it really does. Like these songs do seem really personal while at the same time, relatable to people who might be going through other things. And so I think that's really the power of it all. I totally, man. I, and I, and I, for me personally, I think for, for almost any artist, that that's that's the reason you should be doing music is to be telling those stories and and to be writing those songs and to be to making pe to make people feel connected to what you're trying to say. And obviously, there's a lot of cool things that we got to experience in this industry. And you know, sometimes we get to play shows in front of thousands of people, and we get to meet cool people and work with great writers and producers. But I think in the end of it, if you're really taking care of the music, um, the music will take care of you. Yeah. And if you had Go, it, going back now, if you had chosen to take a different path and not pursue music, what in the back of your mind, what do you think you might have done? What other interests did you have? Like you said, hockey earlier. Yeah, yeah, no, of course. I think uh, that's funny. I mean, and for me, it's just always been music. But yeah, obviously, every Canadian kid growing up in Calgary, <laughs> I mean, at least a lot of us, I think, mean, you know, grow up and we dream of playing in the NHL and and playing hockey. I mean, I kind of knew from an early age that I, I was better with a guitar than I was on skate. <laughs> but uh, yeah, of course, you, you, your childhood dreams is, you know, trying to be an athlete. So, I mean, if I could be first line on the Chicago Blackhawks or something, that'd be a pretty awesome uh, dream too. But I'm happy with how country music worked out. And obviously, I feel like, uh, you know, being a performer, you gotta, you gotta, I love just connecting with people. And I feel like if, uh, if music didn't work out, which uh, luckily so far, it's just been such a great journey for me. I want to do something that involves, you know, working with people. I think that's uh, that's definitely one of my favorite things to to do. And how old are you? Or oh, sorry, not how old are you? How old were you when you moved to Nashville? Yeah, it was a couple of weeks from my nineteenth birthday before I moved to Nashville. So um, it was it was definitely a daunting experience and a crazy experience. I didn't know a soul in the city, and um, yeah, definitely moving at at that young age and and just not knowing anybody was was definitely a, a an experience that was new to me. But um, in the end, I, I'm so happy that I did it. And not only for the music's sake and all the great people that I've met in Nashville and uh, all the cool things that I've been lucky to be a part of, but just, uh, yeah, it, it's just, it's just, it, it's, it really helped me grow up. Just when you go to a new city and you're, and you're 19 and you don't know anyone, it really, you, know, you, you have no choice but to get out of your comfort zone. So yeah. I felt like a lot of growing up in those years, I feel like, you know, I'm still a kid at heart. So I feel like I'm always <laughs> growing up. But uh, no, that was, a, that was definitely a, a special thing about it and definitely something that I'm proud on looking back. Do you still feel as though uh, you're a Canadian living in the States or do you feel like you've kind of fully in, uh, uh, immersed yourself? No, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I feel like I've been, I've been there for seven years now. So, so, so it's really starting to feel like home. Like, it, it, I, you know, I again, I if, for example, like I grew up in Calgary, but I, I was 16 when I got my license, but I've been driving my whole life pretty much in Nashville. So I feel like I can like drive around in Nashville like way more than I know Calgary. Like I know <laughs> I know like the streets in Nashville way more than my hometown, which is kind of like funny to say. But uh, at the same time, though, it's just like you know I, I'm always brought back to Canada. It's where I grew up. It's where my roots are. My family's still here. I got such great friends here, and obviously we're so lucky to come back in the summers and, and play shows in Western Canada. And we're gonna hit Eastern Canada later on while we get a tour of the U.S. throughout the year. So. Canada's always Canada will always be home, but I I feel like I'm lucky, and I can almost say that I I've I'm I have two homes now, both in Nashville and here here back in Canada. So, 
And so with your past recordings, you just got to work with the great producer Noah Gordon, mm -hmm. right? Who's worked with so many legendary artists. What was it like working with him? I know it's Noah's a special, a special man. He um I was lucky to I was lucky to sign kind of my first deal with Average Joe's in Nashville. It's an indie indie label they're owned by Colt Ford and they've been super great with me and let me really take on the creative experiments, uh, ex uh, the creative experience and just like take it into my own own hands while showing their own uh, their own guidance. But getting getting paired with uh, Noah Gordon through the label was just uh, it was a blessing and he's obviously so well experienced and he's had a, he had a record deal as a solo guy years ago and he's learned so much and he's always just treated people with such kindness and um not only is he just so talented as a producer and as a musician himself but he always treats people the right way and it's uh it's cool to it's cool to be around like people like that and um if you can if you can you know put out good music with good people then that's such a win but yeah obviously it's pretty cool that you know Noah's worked with so many of my heroes before like you know Jake Owen and Darius Rucker and all these guys it's uh yeah, at, at the beginning, a couple of years ago, we, we recorded our first songs. It was maybe a little bit nerve wracking, but man, he just makes you feel so comfortable in there, and you just kind of become family. So, it's it's a super super special guy. So I can't can't nothing but great things to say. Uh, you've done a lot of touring, uh, and for a lot of artists, playing a live show is playing a live show. But doing the actual travel for touring, not everybody really enjoys traveling. Mm -hmm. Would you say you actually enjoy the travel aspect behind touring, or no? Well, of course, I think uh, I think you know everyone has his days, and I, and, I, and I think uh, and I think you know sometimes 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 it's, it gets a little tiring for sure. But I mean, to be able to go to all these new cities and like meet all these new people and have these different experiences and play all these crazy cool stages, it's uh, it's 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 super special, and it's what I love to do. And you know, even like last year, I think it was it was crazy actually. It was my first time in Saskatchewan, and I, and I grew up in Alberta, but we opened a show in Saskatoon for Blue Rodeo. And just, you know, that's my first time stepping in there. And we, and we walk into an amphitheater full of 3,000 people and we're playing playing a show for them. And, you know, I, I don't know. I just, my first time in Saskatchewan, <laughs> that's, that's what I got to do. It's uh, it's cool, man. You know, I just, I love, I love the new experiences that, that come with the new city. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a grind, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. And you were just recently at the day one of the Calgary Stampede in the National Saloon. I saw a little bit of a video of you playing there. It looked like it was a pretty epic show. Oh, man. Yeah, we had such a great show. Yes, we uh, we played actually day one and day two of the Calgary Stampede. We had this sneak peek. We had a surprise performance opening up for Dustin Lynch, who's, oh. a, who's a big artist out of Nashville. And uh, that was kind of a surprise. Didn't tell too many people, but we opened the show for Dustin. And then, yeah, then that then we had a 2000 person headlining show in, in Calgary in the hometown. And it was so rocking, man. And, it, and it, there's nothing quite like a hometown show when people know all the songs and are singing it back to you. And yeah, that video that I posted, it's uh, it's it's so fun. And it's and it's one of those memories um, that uh, I won't I won't ever forget. It was a super special night. But yeah, it was a good kickoff to, uh, to what's ahead this summer for sure. How hot was it? <laughs> Man, it, man, it was it was hot. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't too bad. I'm trying to think. In Celsius, it was it was probably like 24, 25 degrees. So it wasn't oh, okay. It was, it was terrible. The first set with Dustin Lynch was kind of storming out there. So, I mean, compared to the Nashville heat that I've been <laughs> doing those summers, it's uh, it's it's awesome, man. I, I I love it. It's not too humid and not I'm not sweating too hard. So that's always good. <laughs> so with playing live right now, what song are you enjoying playing live the most? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I'm probably enjoying playing uh, our new radio single, Way I Drink, the most. We just sent it off to Canadian Country Radio, and um, it's a super fun song. It's a song that I wrote by myself, and it's kind of rare to, these days to put out, you know, a radio single that you wrote entirely by yourself. But it's one yeah. of those songs that, that I that I feel like I, I worked really, really hard on, and, and I had a couple of cool phrases and, and said thing in a different way. And, you know, for these summer shows, my goal is just to when I, when when people come to my show, just to forget about their worries as they walk to the door, you know, leave leave whatever's troubling you behind and just be in the moment and enjoy it. Whether you're gonna have a couple of drinks or just dance and just rock, and I find that way I drink is just such a happy, feel good song that gets everybody on their feet and everybody's smiling. And uh, for a second there, it uh, it makes the world stop. So we're excited that we sent to K Country Radio, but I, it, it's such a fun, it's such a special song for so many ways. Between you know being a being a solo writer on it and how fun it is in this time of year and, and, and all that kind of fun stuff. So, And that's that's a really good song, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, man. I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoyed it. We definitely uh, went a little bit outside the box, but it, it looks like it's paying off. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I appreciate you saying that. And you have a show coming up here in Penticton, right? 
Oh, man, we do. And I'm so, so excited. It's um, the 97 South Songwriters Festival. They're in Penticton. And um, man, it's such a such a special event. And I've, and I've never actually been, but I've always wanted to play it for so, so long. And um, yeah, they, 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 they bring up a bunch of great writers from Nashville, but I'm very, very lucky to be playing the matinee show on Saturday, July 22nd with, uh, with three other great Kane artists here. Uh, Tegan Gaze is one, Dan Davidson, Sycamore. They're all just, uh, they're all just such great songwriters and, and people. And, uh, it's going to be a, such a special night. Uh, we can hardly wait to, uh, to, to play it. And obviously my first show in Penticton, we've, we've played a few shows here in the Okanagan, but it's good to be back. It's good to be back in Penticton, man. I, I can hardly wait. It's going to be such a special event. So you guys all heard it from the man himself, July 22nd. Make sure you're there. It's going to be his first performance here in Penticton, so you don't want to miss it. Uh, is there any advice that you would give to an aspiring musician? Oh, I, I love that question, man. And yeah, there is. Uh, I kind of said it. I kind of said it earlier to you in this, um, in this, uh, in this, in this chat, but. When I first moved to Nashville, I met with a guy named Darren Terrio. And Darren, um, he's a, been a session bass player there for years. And he still plays the Honky Tonks down there. He's played an arena tours with Thompson Square. He's played the Opry with Garth Brooks on bass. And the best piece of advice that Darren ever gives me, that, that Darren ever gave me, and that I, will, that I will give anybody that's looking for a piece of wisdom from me is take care of the music and the music will take care of you. Um, I think it's just in this business, I think there's, times where you can get kind of caught up in the wrong things. But uh, if you focus on your craft and you work hard and you keep improving and keep getting better and really love what you're trying to say and the songs that you're writing and how they sound, uh, that's the most important thing because I think the rest just takes care of itself. So take care of the music and the music will take care of you. Great word of advice from somebody who knows everybody. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to our listeners? Yeah. Thank you guys so, so much for having me on here. And, uh, Man, I'm so excited to get down to Penticton. Come on out to the show. It's going to be really, really fun. The whole weekend is going to be quite the experience. But the 12 o'clock show uh, for the 97 South Songwriters Festival, it's a great lineup. Uh, we're going to have a bunch of fun. We're going to sing some songs, have some laughs, share some stories. And it's a, it's a good way to kick off your Saturday. So come on out. And uh, yeah, I just cannot wait to get to Penticton. It's going to be a great, great show. Awesome. Thank you so much, Cole, for taking time to talk to me. I can't wait to see you on the July 22nd. And as always, Back on the Beach is out now, everybody. So go listen to it. Go check it out. And where's the easiest place for people to find you online? Yeah, the easiest place you can find me is on all socials at Play It Cole. Like, play it cool, but play it Cole. Uh -huh. I'm, all like, I'm, all about, I'm all about the puns. But yeah, my name's Cole Bradley again, and uh, at Play It Cole. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to me and take care of yourself. Yeah, thank you so much, Derek, for having me, man. Looking forward to the 22nd.